Chapter 2 Rest in Peace, MLM You want to know how the majority of network marketing companies get created? It often starts with a couple of guys having a few, or lots of, <laughs> drinks in a bar. One of them slams back a shot and says, You know what we should do? We should start an MLM company. The other guy lifts his head off the bar and says, bleary-eyed, Great idea! What should we sell? And then they look around and see what most other network marketing companies are selling. So they probably end up with some kind of nutrition, skin care, or cosmetics line. Next, they call up a private label company. If they decided on nutrition, they may ask for a line with a multivitamin, energy bar, and a protein shake, for example. And that private label company will sell them the same exact multivitamin, energy bar, and protein shake they produce for a few dozen other companies. Each company has their own custom labels, but they're all selling the same mediocre crap. These businesses weren't started to add value or solve a problem. They were created for one purpose only, to make money for the owners. Now, there's nothing morally wrong with that, but there's nothing particularly compelling about it either. And that is a recipe we see all too frequently in our business. Over-exuberant people pitching positions in a pay plan with no real foundation of a product that adds value. Overzealous product claims are a consistent, prevalent problem with most of the nutrition, wellness, and even skin care companies in our space. And we have way too many instances of ridiculous income claims made across the spectrum of companies in the business. Then, toss in the many cases of people and companies pushing recruiting at the expense of developing a viable customer base. Because this culture almost exclusively emphasizes getting new recruits, there is practically no focus on developing the customer base. Now, if you read my first book, you looked at some of my earlier work, listened to some of my audio albums, you're probably thinking, I'm a hypocrite, and you want to expose me. <laughs> so let me save you the time. There's no need for you to try and uncover a scratchy audio from the 90s or some old grainy video footage of me on YouTube exhorting people to uh, that the real money was in developing the players and the big recruiters. There are literally millions of those recordings out there because that's what I preached for almost 20 years. So I plead guilty as charged. I was a high school dropout who had found a way to create wealth for the first time in my life. Because I was great at team building, I naturally emphasized that in my practice and training. I felt that even if people were buying products only to get or increase a bonus check, at least they were using them and they would receive the benefits. Most of us in the business felt that as long as the retailing option was available, we were fine with having mostly a closed system of wholesale buyers. But society evolves. We used to think women shouldn't vote, leeches cured diseases, and it was acceptable to own human beings as property. As humanity evolves, our consciousness develops and we become more enlightened. Unfortunately, we haven't had enough of that kind of development in the more than 60-year existence of network marketing. For at least a decade, the regulators have made clear that unless we can show a solid base of customers who are not involved in the pay plan, they're going to come after us for promoting money games, pyramids, and Ponzi schemes. There were leaders in our space who recognized this and made changes. 
They created a culture where everyone who joined the team was expected to have 10, 20, or even more customers. The generic mastermind event conducted by Art Jonak and his team has been offering extensive training on this topic for years now. I updated my training albums and developed my Academy for Network Marketing Leadership based on the principles of a large, vibrant customer base. But we've got way, way, way too many dinosaurs left. After the Herbalife and Vima legal skirmishes, everybody started talking about customers. Even the cryptocurrency money games are talking about customers. But you can't just throw in the word customers and think you're in the clear. You have to demonstrate your legitimacy by actually having customers. And the sad truth is, many of the companies in our space don't. They don't have them because their products are marginal, their prices are inflated, or the culture is focused on recruiting only. We lost the plot. We forgot that everything begins and ends with product volume, or PV. Maybe your company calls it customer volume, CV, qualifying volume, QV, or something similar. But the critical point is this. Every commission, override, bonus card program, and other incentive we earn has to be built on the foundation of PV. And PV is only the volume produced by products actually purchased and used by the end consumer. It's time to regain the plot. The business model, known as MLM, multi-level or network marketing, is facing serious and I believe insurmountable threats. We've snatched defeat from the jaws of victory. We took this amazing business model Arguably the last bastion left in the free enterprise system, where an average, ordinary person can create extraordinary wealth and success and perverted it. Hustlers, con artists, and greedy opportunists have hijacked it. We need to initiate a bold, daring, and creative dialogue about the future and what we can do to create a better one for the millions of people impacted by what we do. In 2017, I wrote a manifesto about this. Now, this book is the next step. If you are up for helping our profession to move forward to the next generation of development and want to be part of the movement to make that happen, then by all means, Keep listening. But first, we must acknowledge the fact that this business model, which so many of us love, which has created prosperity for millions, is dying. The cancer has spread too far, too fast, and we let it happen. Time to put it out of its misery. R.I.P. Rest in Peace, MLM. So where do we go from here? How do we rid ourselves of the charlatans who have taken over the business and turned it into a cesspool? How do we repair the damage they caused and restore the reputation of network or multi-level marketing? The sad answer is we don't. The swindlers, con artists, and criminals have destroyed the good reputation of the business, and we're never going to get it back. Instead of hoping something happens to change our story, we need the courage to change it ourselves. I believe the most liberating day of your life will be the one in which you realize that some bridges are meant to be burned. And this tired and misconstrued model known as multi-level marketing needs to be burned. MLM is dead. It's time to put the wreath on the coffin and lower it into the ground. But getting products 
and services to people who love them is still very much alive. It's time we reinvent the way we do that. We need a fresh start. I realize that a growing number of the reputable companies remaining have been using new terms like network sales, affiliate marketing, or direct selling. I don't think any of those labels really capture the most exciting part of our business, which is leverage. So all I can do is share with you what I'm doing personally. I have stopped using the labels like MLM, multi-level, or network marketing. For all marketing and training materials and all recruiting presentations moving forward, I've already transitioned to a new name, Leveraged Sales. Let me say that again, Leveraged Sales. Leverage sales captures the true essence of what made the business great to begin with. These two interlocked elements essentially define what we do. Create sales and then employ the concept of leverage to exponentially increase the rewards for those people producing those sales. That's one of those things maybe jotted down again. Let me go through it again. Create sales and then employ the concept of leverage to exponentially increase the rewards for those people producing those sales. We can employ innovative strategies and new technologies like enticing preferred customer programs, convenient auto ship options, easy customer interface for online sales, and expedient mobile app ordering. We can integrate the concept of leverage, which like compound interest, is one of the true wonders of the world. But this time around, we must work tirelessly, vigilantly, and relentlessly to keep out the people who try to use our legitimate structure as a cover to exploit others. The governments are always a step behind the perpetrators. With new technology like blockchains and cryptocurrencies, the gap is even larger. There are too many people with bad intentions and not enough regulators to police them. We have to regulate ourselves. We don't have to tear down other companies to make our own look better. That's poverty consciousness and actually hurts us all. When a competitor does a better job than you, tip your cap to them and resolve to be better next time. But we have to stop looking the other way when we see people and companies operating unethically. We need to speak up when we see questionable practices, sham products, and recruiting deception. We have to expose the corrupt leaders and companies that are practicing these deplorable activities and keep them out of our new space. We have to change the rules, change the game, and most importantly, change the results. We have to go old school, driven by principles and operating with integrity. We're going to reinvent the best model in the free enterprise system for the ordinary person to create extraordinary results. After all, we were the original disruptors in the marketing space. Now, we're going to disrupt it again. It's not going to be easy. In fact, it's going to be extremely difficult. It will take years to accomplish, and we'll face resistance every step of the way. Billions of dollars in sales in the old recruit-first model will be threatened. Change scares people. Some of them, they will become frightened and lash out at us. Money games and pyramid schemes also generate billions of dollars in revenue. There are thousands of people vested in these corrupt programs. They won't go quietly or easily. Both the media and the general public are going to be skeptical of us, question our motives, and doubt our sincerity. 
It's going to take the dedicated commitment of a core group of people who want to be agents of change. People who believe in the real mission, empowering entrepreneurs to build lucrative customer bases. If you're up for the challenge, willing to leave the past behind, and ready to evolve into the next generation of what we do, then I invite you to join me in this next adventure. Let's look at some of the things we're going to have to do better or do differently. Number one, if you want to build a leveraged sales business, you have to sell. (laughs) As I told you in chapter one, you don't have to master closing techniques, knock on the doors of strangers or make cold calls. You don't have to hype products or manipulate people either. You just have to be a great ambassador for products or services you fervently believe in. If you're not willing to do that, quit now. This new business model isn't for you. Leveraged sales is for people who passionately believe in the product or service line they represent and they want to tell others about those products or services. You may worry that this strategy will limit the people who enter the business. That's not really a problem. You're going to encounter people who say they don't want to sell. Great! They shouldn't join the business to begin with. Number two, stop being so gullible. The reason money games and get-rich-quick schemes work is they prey on people's greed. So many people today are looking for a hack that eliminates the work required for success. There's no such thing as an automated downline building system, and there never will be. Stop looking. Number three, protect yourself and your team against the cottage industry of parasites that latch onto our profession to make money off of you. There are trainers, consultants, and coaches who don't know the first thing about a profession, but they create huge businesses selling advice to us. Most of them don't produce anything or offer any real value, so they will certainly follow us to our new destination. They may claim to be amazing recruiters, brilliant sales coaches, or social media savants. Use a little common sense. If they really had the secret for success in our business, they'd be doing it themselves. And in the new business environment today, we now have to deal with all the distractions of the online world. You also have to inoculate your team against the review, watchdog, and industry news websites. The people who run these sites are experts at SEO marketing, so they always come up near the top of the results when people search your company name. 95% of these are detrimental to your business. You have to practice discernment. Some of these sites are well-meaning but misguided. Some are designed solely as bait-and-switch sites meaning they lure you to read a review on your company, but it's actually a hit piece designed to switch you over to their company. Some conduct polls for best trainer, CEO, or company. The real purpose of these surveys is to capture the emails of your team members so they can recruit them or sell them crap. There's a guy out there promoting a site with huge reach that's simply a PR platform. He gets paid a monthly retainer to write nice things about his clients each month. And when they stop paying him, he writes horrible things about them. And this site has a lot of traffic. Don't allow yourself to be manipulated. These sites matter only to the MLM zombies who don't know any better. Stay away from them and keep your people off their mailing list. You also need discernment for the newspapers, newsletters, and magazines that cover our profession. Most are just like the websites I mentioned. People buy placement. 
as a rising star or a featured profile. If you're willing to shell out $25,000, you can even be an international cover model. <laughs> and I actually, in the print book, we have the emoji of the, the swear words. <laughs> I think this is the first book that, uh, that used emojis in the copy. Uh, but I mean, that's ridiculous. People are actually paying to be the cover story. So your people see those magazines and they think, wow, this is a really important person in our profession. No, it's just somebody who paid to be on the cover. So here's how the system works now. The scummiest and most questionable schemes eagerly pay to have their programs and top leaders featured. Then they use the reprints of these articles to appear legitimate in order to lure in more unsuspecting victims. Again, the key word here is discernment. Be discerning about every guru, coach, consultant, author, website, and publication, including me and this book. Be discerning. All right, number four, stop trying to compete with the bad guys. You can't, and you don't want to. A bank robber can take down as much money in 20 minutes as a plumber earns in 20 years. That doesn't mean you should rob banks. Yes, there will be people claiming they made $10,000 or $20,000 their first month in some deal or another. That may be true if they rolled over a team from another scheme or have a special arrangement with a cooked leg. And if you wonder what I mean by that, that's like a, a, a special arrangement where one or more lines are auto-qualified. Don't try and match that. You can't. The candidates they're attracting with those hype pitches are not the people you're looking for anyway. Number five, stop promoting five and six figure monthly incomes. For decades now, when you started building a network marketing presentation, the first thing you did was grab photos of a Lamborghini, sandy beaches, and stacks of cash. <laughs> then you trotted out those five- and six-figure monthly earners. But the world has changed. We have to leave the propaganda behind. Practically speaking, these tropes aren't nearly as effective as they used to be anyway. Companies that recruit on examples of five- and six-figure monthly incomes are going to get killed by the regulators. It doesn't matter how many fine print disclaimers you use. Those kind of results are not typical, and they never will be. If you make those kind of claims, you're going to get shut down. The truth is, we do have many people that make outrageous amounts of money. Make no mistake, any income above $25,000 a month is perceived as outrageous by almost any standard. The vast majority of people can't relate to earning that kind of money. They would be delighted to have a side hustle that produced $800 a month in residual income. They would be over the moon to have a part-time business that provided them with $3,000 a month in residual income. There are at least 6 billion, maybe 7 billion people on earth whose lives would be dramatically and measurably impacted if you could simply help them earn an extra couple hundred dollars, whatever the equivalent is in their currency, a month to meet their basic needs. Their lives would be dramatically and measurably impacted in a meaningful way if you could simply help them get out of debt. And talking about getting out of debt is a lot sexier than you may think. It resonates with people. Even people who are not in debt 
have parents, siblings, and friends who are upside down in their car payments, have oppressive mortgages, uh, and or they're suffocating in student loans or credit card debt. Stop hyping extreme incomes and start offering people a pathway to get out of debt and you'll do a lot better. Number six, stop job shaming, education shaming, and promoting to the lowest common denominator. We have to stop denigrating college acting like all bosses are evil, or that everybody with a job is a loser. Here's a revolutionary idea for you. Let's start with the premise that most people don't appreciate being patronized, ridiculed, or looked down upon. If you want to help them, stop judging them. If you want them to join your business, begin the process by treating them with respect. Suggesting they're an idiot for going to college or a loser because they have a job is probably not the best way to inspire someone to join your business. The reality is that many people have good educations and enjoy their jobs. Or maybe they earn a lot of money with their job, but it doesn't offer the freedom and lifestyle choices they're looking for. Or just maybe they love their job and want to keep it, but it doesn't pay them very well. Let's be open to all possibilities and meet people where they are. You don't have to be sleeping under a bridge to join leverage sales. We have to kill the meme that everyone who's a success in our business used to be destitute, homeless, or bankrupt. Don't get me wrong. If you are poor, facing challenges, or struggling with personal issues, this business offers you a way to become the next success story. We'll celebrate that. And we all love to hear those redemption stories from the stage. But not everybody is staring down a disastrous calamity and in desperate need of rescue. We need to make the business attractive to people at all levels of success in their lives. So we also need to celebrate the people with good educations, high-paying jobs, and solid financial situations who choose to enter our business. Recruiting isn't about fitting people into the slots you have. It's about offering them avenues to achieve what they desire. When I'm asked to present the leveraged sales business these days, you know what I talk about? Building a solid customer base. Creating a residual income to enhance what your dream lifestyle looks like. And getting the money thing out of the way. No six foot wide bonus checks on stage. No Lambos. No mention of high monthly incomes. Just a simple conversation about getting out of debt and designing your dream life. It works. And it will work for you if you let it. We can be successful without the embellishment, the questionable tactics, and the deceit. There's a whole world of people out there looking for products and services that can make their lives better. And scores of people who not only have a desire to create a residual income, but they're actually willing to work for it. Which is the other reason I'm publishing this book. I recognize that many of the people currently working in the old model of hype and rah-rah are actually good folks. I have friends in this category, friends who I know would have never knowingly joined anything that was unethical or would hurt people. They're ignorant about developing tech like blockchains or don't understand the distinction between selling a product versus an investment. Someone they trusted convinced them that the tactics they used are ethical and legal, and they unwittingly suspended their judgment and went along with them. They're simply not knowledgeable enough to understand they are scamming people and being scammed themselves. I'm hoping we can rescue some of those people and bring them back from the dark side. Working together, we can build the new business model and empower some very deserving people. 
We can make money, have fun, and still make the world a better place than we found it. Yes, MLM is dead. But we don't have to be sad at the funeral. We can celebrate the good memories it provided us, apply the lessons we learned, and evolve to the next level of entrepreneurship and empowerment. If you're still with me and committed to reinventing the profession, let's explore how you select the right company for you.